My name is Michelle Bandman and I'm the Senior HR Analyst for ESTI Consulting Services. My name is Brett. I'm a Network Analyst at ESTI and right now I'm also doing a little bit of software development. My name is Jason Bowie. I am an instructor here at the Recording Arts Institute of Saskatchewan. My name is Nicole Grimley. I'm the Lead Graphic Designer at Trusted Marketing Services. My name is Michael Raffel and I am the Lead Web Developer at Trusted Marketing Services. So what ESTI does is project services and we will go into a company and see if we can offer business analysis, see if we can improve how they work. We also work in application services. So that means partnering with Dell, Amazon Web Services, Oracle, and using their products to help our customers and our clients. And we also provide infrastructure services, which is providing the actual hardware for networking uh, to again make a company work faster, more secure. Uh, with being kind of a student and stuff, my typical work day is kind of in the mornings. I'll work or do school and then whatever I didn't do in the morning I do in the afternoon and you know at work um, typically I'm working on internal projects so it's a lot of software development right now, web development specifically and then before I came back to uh, finish my degree my days were looking a lot, you know, like working with clients, discussing requirements, researching certain products, things like configuring network components and, and stuff like that. So I teach the game art and design course. So it's a one year diploma course that teaches students the basics of game design, coding, some basic art stuff and the process of creating a game from scratch to completion. My technical role would be lead graphic designer, so I kind of uh, look over all of the design stuff that goes out. So that would be yeah, social media, logos, branding, uh, websites. My typical workday varies quite a bit. Essentially, in the morning, I go over with my team what exactly needs to get done. That can vary quite a bit day to day. On some days, it can be, say, a client has a problem with their website and we need to do a front-end CSS fix. And then on another day, I might be interfacing with a third-party service. So our roles at ESTI, you would start as an analyst and then you would move through our structure in terms of senior analyst. From that, you would go on to technical analyst. And from that, that's where the fun starts. <laughs> that's where, you know, the principal architect, the cloud architect, um, once you've gained that knowledge in terms of, you know, building that solid foundation of everything that you know, that's when you can really expand and, and roll into those areas. And, and so you can't really, you know, as a student, uh, you do need to put in the time in terms of, you know, gaining that knowledge and experience. Out of high school, I went straight to, to university. I didn't work or anything. I uh, didn't do a gap year or anything. Uh, and then I did three years of university. Uh, and after my third year, I did a 16-month paid internship that was kind of part of my degree, but not for, for credit kind of thing. After that 16-month internship, uh, ESTI, you know, hired me on um, for after my degree. I've always loved digital art. Um, I started out, as most 90s kids do, playing in Microsoft Paint. But I actually went to school originally for photography, and it wasn't until later on that I kind of realized that my favorite part of photography was actually doing the retouching and working in Photoshop. Um, so after that, I kind of decided to go back to school and started looking at uh, graphic design a little bit more seriously. At the end of my course, there was actually a workplace, um, work placement program and that's actually how I got hired at Trust and Marketing Services. I chose this career because uh, I've, I've always enjoyed computers and uh, web development is basically uh, creative solutions to very logical problems. The, the strangest thing for me uh, is that I didn't actually realize that I wanted to go into computer science when I was in high school, even though I had computer science classes at the time and I really enjoyed them. So it kind of, in hindsight, I feel really stupid for not realizing it because I've always enjoyed computers. I've, I shouldn't be willing to admit how long I've spent being raised by computers. When I was doing my PhD, um, I worked as a TA a couple, a couple times. So a teaching assistant for the games course there, the third year games course. And then after a couple of years, I applied to work as a sessional lecturer. So I was actually teaching the courses, a couple courses at the university. I taught the two of the games courses 
and then taught a couple first year courses and I just really like teaching. Um, in particular, I really like teaching the games courses because I got to teach the students things that I love to do and I also got to see them grow and at the end of the year they had a somewhat completed game that <laughs> they all made, um, which is really nice to see like a final product that came out of you know, the, the, the semester of teaching. So in terms of pursuing uh, a career in computer science, uh, something that students could consider is participating in programs like Game On uh, through the SIEC as well as the 3D printing camp and that's a really good way to get exposure and and really start to understand aside from the fun aspect you know what it all really entails in terms of you know creating something from start to finish. One big thing is having you know personal projects and, and doing that if you are passionate about it. Um, Lots of people have, you know, their own website that they'll make or um, projects that they can demo. It just, I guess, helps, you know, get experience and kind of showcase your skills when, when the time comes. I would highly recommend a career in ICT if you enjoy finding creative solutions to problems that can sometimes be very vaguely defined. The easiest way to get into uh, this field is through education, either self-directed or otherwise. And the easiest way to get a handle on whether or not you enjoy it is just find an open source project that you enjoy and try and contribute to it. You can go into animation, you can go into video editing, you can go into, yeah, uh, focusing more on like illustration side of things, uh, doing more custom things, and then of course there's the branding and logos, and you never know, but like if you try one thing out, it might lead you down a completely different path to something else, so. Tech isn't going anywhere anytime soon, so it's a pretty reliable source of, of income and experience. Also, computers are everywhere. No matter what career you have, you're going to be interacting with a computer at some level. Um, so having some knowledge in ICT in general is always good, no matter what career you have. And careers in general are becoming more and more integrated with technology and ICT and things like that. Um, so even if you're not working directly in there, you're working tangentially to it. If you're looking for a job in this field in Saskatchewan, you're not likely to find one where you are a cog in a wheel of 500 other employees and you just do your day-to-day -day thing you're much more likely to find employment in a relatively smaller company where you have much more impact and your voice is much more powerful. And I really like that about Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm.